Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very, very happy and very special Thursday. Thursday, Thursday morning out there in crypt, good old cryptocurrency land. I myself, a little bit underslept, as you might be able to tell, but you know what? Just got plenty of energy to do enough cryptocurrency magic net money analysis right here, right now. So let's, so let's waste no more time getting a live scene. And Bitcoin, what have you done in the overnight session? Actually having a little bit of a dumpy dump, although quickly bought back up, uh, producing this massive, what, what I would call a bull wick down around here. Now, of course, looking at the higher time frames, we're going to go over, you know, ideas and why I think that this might be a little bit less so. But overall, you know, technically speaking, this would be a massive bullwick above a very important uh, support that we were speaking about yesterday, that yellow 21 exponential around 3750 it is now. We actually have crossed officially the 21 and the 55. So overall, there is something brewing right now, and there actually is starting to be a paths forward uh, when we go along the the good old crypto sphere. So let's get down into the let's get actually over to the oscillators right now. Again, if you want to make this easy for yourself, there's only there's only two things that really need to be that really to be need to be denoted right now. As long as we're below 3750, I'm overall bearish. I'm going to be looking for shorts uh, along any sort of major resistances. But as long as we're above the 21 exponential at 3750, don't really want to be too damn bearish. As you saw last night, it was defended quite well. In fact, perhaps even more so the 3650 level, which we'll get into in just a second. But overall, you know, again, that is the greater picture at large on like kind of the mini time frame, I guess you could say, somewhere in between the micro and the macro, like on a you know on a day by day basis. Uh, daily oscillators uh, still coming down. Daily Stokes just getting into the neutral zone for the first time in a while. Again, the last time that Bitcoin was ever in the more critical zone as far as the Stokes were concerned um, with my settings was, well, the last few dumps that we've had. Again, your your early September dump from 7,400 to 6,000. Your early August dump from 8,400 to 6,000. Your... Uh, early May dump. These are all early in the month, by the way, uh, from 10,000 to 6,000. And then, of course, the middle of February last year dump from 12,000 to 6,000 as well. So again, overall, you know, when I am looking at this setup, while yes, that was a bullish reaction that we saw last night, I am very skeptical of this. And we're going to go over some more reasons as well. Uh, daily RSI, Trending below the exponential right here. Uh, not necessarily the best setup of all time, but not necessarily a bad thing either. It's kind of more neutral than anything at the current moment in time. Uh, I do want to go over the two-day right now. The two-day dollar time frame is actually hinting at a stoke cross the downside. This is not necessarily confirmed just yet. If we do have another big up move, it will get undone, but uh, we did just get another tick last night, so it's going to take at least two days to actually fully resolve itself. Of course, today, the big news is it's going to be the monthly. So let's just uh, skip on over everything and go on over here to the monthly and look at the implications of what price action could be doing tonight as the monthly again will be setting in stone setting itself in stone for the month of february at uh, 7 p.m eastern time tonight and if we close above or below this green 55 exponential moving average right here that's going to kind of be my next big insight into what the bots what the algos what this market wants to do for the you know for, for the next segment do we want to carry on this bounce more do we want to try another tr do we want to have another try into like the mid four thousands or is this gonna or is this gonna move downwards uh, sooner rather than later? Overall, Bitcoin not really breaking the trend either which way. Of course, when we're coming into the end of the month right now, looking at the monthly um, is pretty. You know, it's pretty. It's it's not gonna change all that much as as far as like the oscillators go, as far as the volume characteristics go. Uh, I mean, barring any sort of crazy move, of course, don't want to discount that. But one day out of almost, you know, uh, out of 28, it's it's like, you know, how much damage can you do? Of course, terrible, famous last words to say. Sorry about that. I should not say more aggressive things like that. But overall, my point is, is that the way that the volume signature is kind of set up right now, especially on the monthly, looks to be consolidation. And as you can see, you know, these three last monthly dollars coming off of this major massive downturn from 6,000 does appear to be just one massive consolidation as verified by the volume signature, as verified by the price structure, which is probably best seen on a three day dollar time frame right over here, which you can see basically we have a nice little hunt, a nice little uh, swing fat of uh, swing pattern failure right over here, and then straight down is what it looks like to me as long as we are respecting the three day 21 exponential. Anyways, back onto the monthly because that's where I wanted to, uh, to focus a little bit more on. But the next big piece of the puzzle for me is do we end above or below that green 55 exponential? If we end above, then this area likely gets drawn out further. We might even have a test up into the high 4,000s. If it 
ends below, then I'd be looking for that. Uh, then I'd be looking for new lows sooner rather than later. Meaning, you know, probably in the next month or two. Um, and I'd be looking somewhere down around the next major monthly support, which be, which would be very obviously around uh, 24, 2500 ish area. So yes, I am overall bearish on Bitcoin. Yes, I don't believe that the lows are in for Bitcoin, but I do believe that. If we if we end the monthly above the 55, which is currently 36 uh, 80ish area, then it's very likely that Bitcoin gets another try into the 4000s, uh, deep into the 4000s. Actually, I'd imagine as well. But as these two moving averages approach each other right here, and as the red tends to moving average has a very aggressive downward slope into that yellow 21 expansion moving average, that does likely suggest that if this is going to be a consolidation again, as we looked at on the three day, as we looked at on the volume signature, then that's likely to be resolved to the downside as the bots and the algos start, start to to intensify their selling is what that's typically going to imply again from myself coming from a background in trading traditional um traditional markets as a as a market maker authorized trader on major uh, on major exchanges like new york stock exchange arc and then later chicago boards Option exchange which sounds incredibly fucking arrogant but i just say that so that you know people who are new here um have an idea of who i am um we used to use the monthly 21 expansion to judge if something was generally bullish or generally bearish. So as long as Bitcoin's, you know, below this, this yelling moving average right here, I'm, I'm going to be generally bearish. Now, of course, there's multiple ways to skin a cat um, as far as declaring the bear market over. There are three things that I'm looking for. I always like to go over these things because it's very important to understand what the macro triggers are, not the micro, because, of the, you know, if, if you're looking at the micro, if you're looking at anything under a fucking daily, it's it, it's like it can't be done. You're going to think that every fucking move is a major breakout or breakdown. That's just not the truth. We very rarely have those, actually. Uh, but again, the the weekly over here, the 200 exponential moving average, as long as Bitcoin's both opening and closing weekly lows below that, that that purple moving average at 4120 great number um <laughs> not not quite so much but uh as long as we're doing that you know not so much of, of of a reason to not be overall bearish there would be no reason for me to consider that the overall bear market is over now of course if bitcoin both opened and closed a weekly deal above that i would drastically change my tune but it needs to do that first. Again, when it comes to technical analysis, when it comes to be a trader, I'm going to always go with what's been working until it doesn't work anymore. And for the last year, the downside has been working um, as we've been, well, actually more than a year now, a uh, year, year and a few months. So that would be step number one. The step number two would be the monthly, as we just saw, the monthly closing above the yellow 20 month expansion, which is all the way at f like 5,400. That would immediately actually make me bullish. In fact, just for just for uh, history's sake, the last time that we were actually in a bear market in 2014, 2015, you see that when Bitcoin got, uh, regained the, 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 the yelling moving average right here, that was actually the straight up beginning of your upwards momentum. And I would argue that that was perhaps the best entry as well, because not only because you're not stuck in something that is going sideways for quite literally a year, but you're actually in something that's moving upwards and onwards. So again, taking into consideration opportunity cost, something that I think very few people really consider. Um, that is kind of the, that is kind of the, you know, the advantage of use something like that. Now, of course, a third and final and most important piece of information that would that would make me get out of bear market mode into bull market mode um, would be Bitcoin getting back above six thousand. You're probably going to know beforehand. Uh, I mean, even even the even the weekly trigger um, getting taken out would make me really start to reconsider a lot of things that I'm saying. But uh, but hey, until all three of those things happen, it's still you know a question in the back of my mind. As uh, Bitcoin has not really done any of the five, six, or seven, or whatever how many however many it is um, that uh, that I look for for a major market cycle low of course when it comes down to that check out the playlist titled long-term analysis because it'll go into much more detail than what i'll do on a video like this because it quite literally is like an hour of examples and and, and whatnot but uh but just kind of like quickly list them off i mean as far as bitcoin is concerned on the current low i don't really see the volume that i want to be uh be seen at a, at a major market cycle low i don't see the reaction that i want to see at a major market cycle low i don't see the time spent at the low that i want to see at a major market cycle low i don't like the return to the low that's very questionable as well i don't like the underlying market dynamics mainly the shorts versus longs also the crypto fear and greed index and also the historical vol volatility rank not given a low also the mvt signal not given a low which both of those have been 100 percent perfect with with calling major mark cycle lows before and the fact that they are not signaling a low right now is well just another another reason on, on top of it so again zero for all of them is not fucking good i mean shit i would understand if people if you were considering this a major low you know if we had a couple but uh as of the current moment in time, not so much. Um, not so much. Anyways, let's do some. Let's do something I haven't done in a while, which I'm, I actually really want to look at right now. Let's look at the good old inverted Hagen read chart, and you can see right here. Um, how would I read this? I mean, 
you know, how would you read this? Very obviously, we broke out of here to the downside and then regained it and then regained it. But there's not too much to make off of this. In fact, what is likely happening, I would suggest in confluence with the, with the current volume signature, which we still have kind of formulating, is that we have something new going on. We have something more like this, where, I mean, what does this look like? It basically looks like, you know, a massive bull flag uh, with, this, with well resistance right around 41.30. That would be the weekly 200 exponential moving average and support around 34.30, which is kind of coming in around the weekly 200 simple moving average, which, by the way, I forgot to mention as well. Um, why is it minus? Oh, whoops. I did two minus. I should do one minus. Sorry about that. Uh, so a little, little bit different there. Wow. That completely changes it actually. Uh, but again, something like this, you know, something like this is what it looks like to me. Um, so typically a bullish continuation pattern is what we'd be looking at over here. And uh, there would be a measure move to be made off of this. I'm going to imagine that it probably does line up with, with the, uh, with the area that we're looking at on, um, on the monthly. And yes, it does, you know, right, you know, it, it, into the mid two thousands. Now this one's pointing at around uh, 26, 2500, something like that. Um, so again, it, it would be something like that if it were to be initiated. But of course, just like I don't want to get bullish until those three major macro things are hit, I don't want to get too damn directional bearish until we actually break this level to the downside around 3400. Um, it, it is a lot easier to actually see this sort of a thing on um, on on the inverted chart, funnily enough. So that is the advantage of using it. Just kind of rework your perspective. Anyways, going back onto the regular charts, uh, we should we should go back on over here just so I can quickly get that thought out. Again, if you're more macro perspective, which I, I typically don't really speak towards, but if you're like a longer term person, then you might find this. Uh, you know, th this is what I'd be focusing on right now. Again, it's not financial advisor, not a financial advisor, blah blah blah. Go fuck yourself, SEC. But 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 but. The purple 200 exponential and the in the pink 200 simple moving average. As long as Bitcoin's within there, this is all just consolidation. I don't know how people are coming up with this being some sort of an ascending triangle. There's there's no ascending triangle here, like at all whatsoever. None. What the fuck? An ascending triangle? What? I don't. I <laughs> I know you use Wix, so maybe that's maybe that's how people are getting it. They're doing this right here, and then they're kind of crawling it up. Um, I would still suggest checking out your volumes, your volume statistics, and uh, and looking at the overall signature on the lower time frames. <laughs> Because it actually does help to get it to get an idea of what's been going on, and, and I would say that that is uh, not what we're really seeing right now. Anyways, um, as long as Bitcoin is you know is above the 200 simple, that's your major support. As long as it's below the 200 exponential, that's your major resistance in the more immediate time frames. Just kind of bouncing around there. All you've had to do for the last three months was just be a seller on this area, 4150, buyer on this area, 3300. That, that's all it has to be, and it's rising over time, of course, as well from the pink 200 simple. But uh, we'll be we'll be gaining more. I mean, it is kind of coming up a little bit more aggressively as of recent times. By the way, the dump last night, getting all the way down to the red 10 simple moon average on the weekly and providing perfect support, actually. Um, I mean, not super perfect, but, you know, good enough is fucking good is good enough as I uh, as I lose my voice right there. But uh, but hey, as long as we're holding above it, I mean, does Bitcoin has an have another chance to kind of pick this guy up and carry him back onwards? I mean, all of your, not all of your, but but all of the medium time frame um, also just starting to switch around a little bit. Or sorry, they're not switching around, but they are gaining momentum to the upside. You see the uh, you see four hour Stokes headed straight up, very erect, very powerful. I think eight hour just getting started as well. Yes, they are. Ten hour same sort of thing, and twelve hour I think is hinting at a fresh cross as well. So again. And um, it's, it's, it's kind of a tight picture right here in the lower time frames. It's actually still the same. It's actually still the same story as yesterday. Uh, if we go to maybe a four hour. Yeah, four hours going to get it best um, where basically the major resistance. Sorry, let's go to uh, bit Mexico uh, where, where the kind of our big resistance is right here at about 3850. As long as you're below 3850, you know, it's just kind of just kind of ranging. Um, and as long as we're above essentially 3750, we could say uh, to the downside, just just in a range. Now, if we do break up above 3850, I would be looking for a move towards 39.50 right over here retest this area that'll also likely fulfill a gap in cmes which closed friday last friday at uh 39.30, technically speaking. Now, of course, this is best seen on a daily, perhaps, which we would likely pop back up and test that green 55 exponential. So, of course, CMEs do have a discount on them right now by about ten dollars. So that puts spot, you know, maybe like ten bucks higher than that. Somewhere around the low 3900s what it is what it kind of equate to. Um, CMEs, though, you know, you know, yes, they did lose the 10 simple moving average yesterday, but uh, clearing obvious defense along this yellow 21 exponential and very obviously defending this horizontal right here, which I for 
for whatever reason I don't have in. I'm gonna imagine that this is probably some sort of a massive fib as well. Let's actually do this one out. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a 618. Yeah, so basically we got down, we got back down to the 618 on uh, on CMEs. Now the 618 was not replicated on spot charts actually. So this is really the this is really the benefit of paying attention to the CME futures because just because it's a more um, traditional, more professional exchange, the price action seems to be best represented here um, and easiest to read. So again, you know, if, if if you saw it come down to this level, the 618 right here, I mean that's usually going to be usually going to provide a nice bounce at the very least and perhaps even a reversal, which um, as of the current time, we do not have a reversal confirmed. We came about five bucks shy in the last rally, but uh, I still wouldn't put it past it. I mean, it's still very much available. It's not. It's not like it's one sided right now in the lower time frames. The lower time frames are what make me think that this can that this thing can very easily rally back up. Um, of course, let me just get rid of this. Just kind of playing around with all sorts of different. Uh, different movements here, but you know, 3730, if you want to use it on an hourly support, of course, I'd be using a higher time frame to do 3750, um, the daily being the most important right now. But, uh, but Hey, again, like I said, if 3850 gets taken to the, taken out to the upside, uh, there ain't nothing stopping you from 3950. And if you get above 3950, I don't think that it's appropriate to really be uh, bearish in the more like mini time frames. I'd actually be looking for a run to probably 4,200, maybe even 43, 44, something like that. Um, so again, with all that said, I am leaning to the downside because that's, you know, that's why I'm kind of looking at the higher time frames right now. That's why I'm looking at the weekly. That's why, that's why I'm looking at the monthly. That's why I'm also looking at the bi-weekly as well, which by the way, that's not redundant enough. Uh, pretty interesting. Um, pretty interesting with that last move. The bi-weekly showing a nice comeback to the 10 simple moving average and complete rejection as these two moving averages approach each other, which is very, very nasty if they are to, if they are to cross as this rejection is, is well, about a few days away from getting confirmed as we will set this one in stone um, in, later this weekend on Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So if we do end like here, then that's going to be a clear rejection as these two moving averages will tick and likely confirm a bearish cross. And at that point in time, I'd be looking for this to probably, you know, probably test some supports after that. Uh, looking at our RSI, just popping back up and testing our exponential over here. Um, you know, pretty pretty normal price action. I mean, yeah, the jewel's getting pretty fucking low, so don't typically see it stay this low for that long. In fact, the last time that it was this low was the bottom of 2014, 2015, uh, quite literally right here, perfectly on the on on the on the low. Um, but again, I would still be I would still be careful. Of course, a few days left for that to actually confirm or not confirm, confirm or deny. Uh, so again, gonna take its time, and that's why I'm not really in any big rush to get into position today. Uh, I did take a position yesterday, but it ended up just being a scalp after we saw the reaction coming off of 3650. It, it, didn't want to have something like that. I mean, we saw whenever I see a massive wick like this, as soon as as soon as that one closed, I just close. I closed my position right here. I missed out on like probably almost a hundred fucking bucks. I mean, it's it's embarrassing. But at the same point in time, you know, when you feel like you might have a breakdown and then just got gets bought back up like this, and then your hourly ends with a massive wick. It's probably probably gonna have some more follow through to the upside, which we did. Um, currently speaking, though, again, just kind of wedging ourselves into this area. Um, okay, so let's go over. Let's go over again the three day, which was kind of the impetus for me for me even taking that trade to begin with. But overall, the three day twenty one exponential, this yellow moving average right here, has been actually calling the 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 failed rallies for the last year perfectly. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's actually go back in time to the last time that Bitcoin actually got above the yellow twenty one exponential. Again, this guy right here. And the last time that we actually did that was right here in uh, in late August, early September of last year, which basically called the more like the last ditch, the last grasp for air. Um, a rally attempt above this area. And then once we close back below it, close below this yellow uh, moving average right here, it was continuation onto the downside of the range, which obviously was not that much, not too much more in this, uh, in the, at this point in time. But bear with me for just a second. The time before that, getting it, you know, a little bit more precisely over here, as you can see, Bitcoin gets above it. It puts in the last kind of grasp of, of the rally. And then once we break it back down to, 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 to the, uh, to the downside, it's just a straight shot down to the, down to the lows of the range. The time before that, right over here, late April, early May, on the run to 10,000, again, gets it more precisely over here. You take it out, and that's kind of like the last, you know, the, the last of the Mohicans for this rally. Break it right over here, and then full on continuation down all the way to 6,000. And then obviously the same thing for your 12,000 marker over here, you know, getting it more precisely. But I do want to show something on, the tw uh, on this one right here. In fact, 
more important than what we just spoke about because you'll notice that on this first run right here, it actually does break it. We close a three day dildo below it. And then this next dildo actually finds support on the red 10 simple moon average and rallies back up again above the yellow 21 exponential and then falls its way down. Funnily enough, that's actually this, the exact same setup that we have right now going on over here where Bitcoin closed below the 21 exponential after regaining it for just a couple of days or sorry, a, a couple of dildos, which is representative of three days each, right? And we've actually found support on the red 10 sip moon average. So does this do the same thing? Do we get another run up? I mean, this does offer up the opportunity for it. Obviously, this won't be confirmed until until we set another three day dildo in stone, which won't be until um, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's gonna, yeah, it's going to take it's going to take a little bit of time. But but again, my point is that if we actually regain it, I would be looking for another run back up to the prior high. And my personal opinion is that we probably even try a little bit higher than that. Um, so that's going to be the next big signal for me. Of course, the monthly coming into Confluence tonight, if the monthly closes below the 55 on, uh, you know, by, by end of day, which would be 36.80, then, well, that kind of negates it to begin with. It's, I, I put way more weight on that, but but again, assuming you know, assuming that we that we uh, that we're still undecided on that, well, this would be my next kind of marker, I suppose. Um, so again, could we have another reaction like that as we did, as we saw literally one year ago at that double top? Perhaps, perhaps it produces a very similar result as well. Um, overall, it is interesting to me that uh, we do have. Do we have anything to be aware of on over here? Actually, no, not really. All of our other oscillators on the three day are not. The, I mean, they're actually they're actually quite bullish. Uh, three day Stokes just headed up, getting very erect as well. Not looking bad at all. Uh, three day RSI not telling us all that much about price action. Just kind of oscillating between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone, which is typically a bearish indication. It's, it's been doing that for literally the last year. Um, in fact, this was the highest time that we saw the RSI get in the last year, except for uh, the run, the, the the run towards 8400 in late late July, that was rejected. So again, you know things like that. I am I, I do want to be aware of going as we go through this uh, as we go through this area. Because it's likely going to have some massive implications because that would also likely imply if that's going to happen that the monthly ends above the green 55 exponential, which would also just make me be looking for that next move, probably into the into at the very least a low 4000. But my personal opinion is that you actually work your way into the medium to high 4000s. Um, so again, it's uh, it's it's kind of getting it's kind of getting down to crunch time right now as the monthly is getting closer and closer. That is the most important thing as of the current moment in time. The three day is going to obviously come into contact tomorrow. So got to wait for that one. So it's, you know, it's, it's as of less importance, but you know, just understand how all these are related to each other right now. Uh, let's go check out, um, do we want to check out CMEs? Yeah, let's go check out CMEs. CMEs, uh, we got also just coming down right here. Daily Stokes coming down. We got uh, daily RSI popping back up, testing the exponential. Uh, I would imagine that it probably does find some resistance there. So there is pressure mounting. We do have the red tensile moon average as uh, overhead resistance. We have failed to get continuation as of just yet. But if we do get back above 38.15, that will be marked as such. And, you know, at that point in time, it, it, it would just look like from a dildo perspective that we're likely to get back to 39-ish. Uh, 30, um, what else do we have to look at? Uh, let's go look at GBDC. How did GBDC close yesterday? Yeah, GBDC is the one that makes me think most bearish, actually. Uh, closing below as a major rejection of the yellow 21 exponential. In fact, both opening and closing below, I believe. Uh, did we did we open below? No, we actually did not. But a rejection of the red 10 simple and then closing below the 21 exponential after yesterday closing below it as well. Uh, this one looks like it wants to come down to me. Again, just another lower high. This looks like a nice little local top. In fact, I mean, it's been confirmed as the local top for the last few days. I'm not seeing anything crazy there. Uh, daily soaks coming down, fresh cross up in the more critical zone. Again, the last few times that it's even gone into this zone were major dumps beforehand. Again, Jan you know, early January dump, uh, late, late July dump. You know, you're getting the same areas late or early May dump. You know, right over here. Um, this one looks like it wants to come back down to the lows of the range. That's what it looks like to me. Um, overall, it looks like we had a sending triangle, which broke out to the upside, a little bit of a fake out, and we're resting on the breakout trend line right now, which, yes, a lot of the time things will pop back and retest, and that's completely fine. But this is also why I don't like trading breakouts or trading formations, because you see a lot of these sort of failed breakouts. If it's going to be a legitimate, like, world record changing breakout, you don't want to retest a major, a major breakout trend line anytime soon. For example, you know this to be true because you've seen it. You've already seen it, in fact, as when Bitcoin was hanging above this 6,000 level over here, when it actually finally broke 6,000, 
it didn't give you a second time to, to re-enter like right on a retest. You know, we tried at around 5,500 for a few days and then just continuation pretty damn soon afterwards. So if, you know, if that were to be the case, I don't believe that that is the way that price action would be, would be acting right now. It's at least, it'd be, it'd be a lot less likely as far as I'm concerned with. Um, so again, that's what I'd be looking at over there. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we talked about GBTC. We talked about Bitcoin. I mean, we also, did we talk about the jewel? Uh, again, jewel kind of telling you the same thing that we looked at on the three day 21 you know you have this nice uh, peak over here calling all the tops of the last year for, for for each and every run on the last year every time that the jewels gotten above the 80 marker it's been a major dump uh, again the we just got in there uh the other day um the last time was early september 7400 to 6000 dump the time before that was early uh early august from the 8400 to 7 to 6000 dump the time before that was your may dump from 10000 to 6000 the time before that was your was your february dumps from uh, double top at 12000 so again, um, you know, I do, th I do see more bearish things and overall it's a bearish market. So I'm always going to lean to the downside, but Hey, if the monthly closes above today, above that 36 80 ish area, I, you know, there's a time and there, there's a time to have those positions and a time to not have those positions. So again, that's what I'd be looking at over there, by the way, the, tw the yellow and the green are very, are pretty much confirmed across the upside right over here. However, I do want to show something on this as well. This would typically be a more bullish cross. In fact, usually when it does happen in traditional markets, I get pretty fucking bullish off of it. But, 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 let's just go back test it for this last uh, for for this last over a year's worth of price action during the you know during the bearish market. Uh, the last time that we actually hinted at this um, happening was right here. You had one massive green dildo, but that was your top. And then the next day, just massive girthy red dildo party beginning, bringing you all the way back down to the to the, to the low side of the range. The time before that was right over here, a little bit more precise, getting uh, getting you this last kind of ditch, uh, this last this last ditch effort um, rally over here. Once we break back down below the 21 exponential, it's just straight back down to the low side of the range. The time before that was right over here. You know, getting the very last little bit, the last little gasp of air of this rally then once we break it over here at about nine thousand, straight down to six thousand from there and then of course the time before that was well actually we didn't have it crossed over here so yeah again um just more things like historically speaking kind of you know telling us telling us about what the reaction has been um as of recent times so yeah let's get on over to the longs and shorts of it all longs and shorts basically where they were yesterday we got a little over twenty-five thousand opened uh longs versus a little over nineteen thousand open shorts with about two thousand of these guys hedged so we really have about seventeen thousand open naked shorts again the big news with this is that the shorts are in the zone where I become increasingly, where, where historically speaking for the last year, each and every major dump from all those major tops was initiated when the shorts were in this range, in this red box territory. Again, going back all the way over here, this was your double top at, at 12,000. This was your May top at 10,000. This was your August top at 8,400. This was your November dump from 6,000 to 3,000. Then once again, we're in this range. Now, of course, just because you're in the range doesn't mean that you immediately V bottom out of there and, you know, in and in, in, in initiate dump. I mean, as you can see, it, during the run to 8,000, shorts were in this range for about a, a week and a half, two weeks, something like that, right over here. But uh, again, historically speaking, it puts us on the radar. So that's why, that's kind of the big news that I always want to be speaking about. On the radar, what am I most looking for? What is, what, what is, what is confluent with each other and what is a green as far as the underlying market dynamics as far as price volume and time? Well, you can see very easily right here. In fact, the last time when Bitcoin broke 6,000, we had about 20,000, we had, we had a little, little under 20,000 shorts on the table. Right now we have a little, little under 20,000 shorts on the table as well. Uh, the longs on the other hand were during, you know, the break of 6,000 right around here, right around 26,000. Where are we at the current longs right now? Right around 20, a little, a little bit under that, but 25, 25 and a quarter. So we actually have the same exact ratio as well and the same exact like uh, absolute values which is very, 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 very interesting. Um, again, something that you would not expect to see if this, if, this, if this market weren't bearish. This is, again, one of the reasons why I do believe that the market is still in, in the overall grips of a bearish, uh, of big fat bears, because, well, I'd want to see those statistics actually flipped on their face if, uh, if, if Bitcoin was about to rally its way out of this um, more, aggressive, more aggressive downwards action overall downtrend. I want to see this quite literally the opposite. Again, going over to the crypto fear and greed, fear and greed index, very interesting statistics over here as well. We're, t we're currently taking out a 39, which is fear. But le let me remind you that just the other day over the weekend, we were at 69. That means that means that 
people were more optimistic a few days ago when Bitcoin had not taken out anything on the macro areas that we spoke about earlier than they were at any other time, except for quite literally about one year ago at the double top in uh, February at 12,000. At 12, but that, again, I would argue that at any of, at any of these, these other times, Bitcoin had technically a better chart because it hadn't had, you know, truly, truly fucked itself over. It, it, it you know, it's it, until it's confirmed below 6,000, it's not confirmed, right? I know it's not too helpful, but my point is, is that, um, you know, still a chance from a technical standpoint. Once we got over here, once once we got into this more aggressive downtrend over here, people are getting more excited, which is very, very strange. Again, we want to see these these statistics actually flipped. We want people to be more skeptical and more questionative of a potential major major market rally. So you, you probably saw on crypto Twitter and crypto YouTube and crypto Reddit, all people's posting about is the bottom in the bottoms in we're going back to 20,000 end of year, no end of day, because who has time for that, you know, shit like that, which is very misleading. And again, that's why I really, 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 really hearken on those higher time frames. looking at the weekly looking at the monthly. Um, and then I mean, in some cases, just looking at the last yearly support, essentially. So those three things matter a lot to me as Bitcoin has not really done any of the things that I expect to see on a major mark cycle low. Those are the only things that that would have to be undone for me to reconsider that and start to think to myself, OK, uh, the bearish market is over and it's time to flip around the whole strategy. But for now, things are still very similar. Um, so again, with the monthly coming up, that is of great importance. I will also denote that, hey, the the, the dump last night bouncing perfectly off the uh, 3650 area right here, the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement. I mean, you can see that you can see that the fibs are pretty much governing the market right now. We got the 382 coming in right here, actually, which is basically 3750. We got a current resistance. I mean, you know, if we were to wake, work our way back up, uh, 3900 is probably going to be around the next resistance cl uh, shelf around 3900 to 3950 in this range. Um, but by the same token, there's actually we're actually kind of in no man's land right here. Uh, so again, while Bitcoin did have a phenomenal reaction off the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement, if it were to come back down there again, I would not look for it to hold. In fact, I'd actually look for it to likely break and we probably find our way down to the 618 down here at around 3530, 3550-ish area. And at that point in time, I mean, you know, it's, it's really just likely coming back down to the lows of this range, uh, which, you know, we have this, we have this very obvious uh, inc uh, inclining support trend line going all the way back from my current low. That would be coming in around current price section around 3450. So I would be looking for a test there if things actually did start to break down if we did close the daily below the 21 which is 3750 we did close the daily if we did actually break 3650 on a on, on a lower time frame and that would also you know obviously have confluence with the monthly if the monthly were to actually just close below 38 3680 to begin with well understand how all these things are related to each other and yes while i would be looking for a, for a more immediate pass to the low side of the range i'd be looking for continuation overall to new lows um, again, we spoke about a measure move pointing down to about the 2600 level, but I'll just kind of flesh that idea out a little bit more. And this again comes with a major, 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 major caveat. Oh my God, very important. I'm making a major assumption here that the pink 200 simple moon average that we're looking at right here actually breaks. That's currently coming in around uh, 3350, 3400 ish area. Again, basically with that rising support bottom that we saw, if that would actually break, then I do start looking towards, you know, the measure move on this formation that we look towards, which was around 2500, give or take a few bucks. Um, basically income is by this blue box territory between 23 and 2600. That also is the 886 Fibonacci retracement, as you can see right here, taken from the ultimate high to the ultimate low of the last market cycle. And Bitcoin actually did bottom out the 86 at the prior market cycle right over here uh, from, a, from a similar Fibonacci retracement taken on that guy. We also do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area. We also do have some massive volume profile being thrown down in this area as well. By the way, you'll also notice that as soon as Bitcoin loses this kind of 33, 3400-ish area right here, there ain't nothing doing all the way down to the mid to, to, uh, to the mid to low 2000s very similar to what you saw at 6000 after this area broke down and it was just a straight shot like knife like like fucking a knife through through butter how's the saying go what does it even mean no one fucking knows man like a butter knife through nut through butter take that samurai knife um all the way down so again you'd likely get another flush is what i'd be looking at but uh, you know that's likely to take some time it's not going to happen tomorrow it's not going to happen the next day uh, these things are higher time frame ideas that we're looking at. We're looking at a weekly. It takes quite literally one week to just put that fucking dildo in place. So again, I'm just saying, hey, if you see that trigger happening, if you see two, the 200 simple moon average on the, on the weekly being taken out, um, again, it's not financial advice. It's, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'll tell you exactly what I'll be doing. I mean, you can probably figure it out. 
So again, that's what I'm thinking right there. Um, but again, it's all gonna hinge on what happens later today. Uh, all these ideas are just potential setups until we get until we get full and confirmation than that, then we'll get the three day tomorrow. And with those two pieces of information, that should be a massive, massive clue onto what's likely to happen next. You know, do we get that rally into the low 4,000s or do we get a nice dump back down to the lows of the range? Now, of course, all the underlying market dynamics, all of the underlying market fundamentals are quite bearish right now as we looked at with the margin shorts longs, as we looked at with the sentiment indicators, as we looked at with a lot of our oscillators kind of getting to areas that they have in the past that initiated major dumps as well. But hey, uh, until it actually happens, it ain't confirmed. So let's go on over, let's go on over to Mr. Buterall. Mr. Buterall actually himself looking more like a descending triangle on the four hour total time frame right here. Maybe if we go to the six, it'll look a little bit more obvious. Eh, not so much. I guess we could do it more on the four hour. Uh, but basically, descending triangle right here, we did just get a very nasty moving average cross uh, kind of leading leading right on before that major dump down to uh, 128 and 80 cents. Again, our kind of support trend line right here, uh, you know, very, very similar to Bitcoin, pops all the way down to the to the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement. If we do move back down there again, it's very likely to move back down to the lower end of the range at around 117, um, the 618 down around here, basically a retest of this major, major trend line going all the way back towards May at 800 of last year. Uh, we'd probably retest that as we did, as, as Mr. Buter actually did break out of it um, to the upside. By the way, also just another fundamental thing kind of lining up with all of this, uh, being a little bit more bearish than not, is Mr. Buterall does have his fork later today, I believe it is, because it's the 28th of February, or maybe, or whatever it is. Whenever it is, it's likely around today. It's getting pretty fucking close. And again, with these sort of major upgrades, or sorry, with, with, with these sort of events, we get event psychology. With event psychology, we typically get the same sort of reaction. We get a pump up leading into the event, just as we saw up over over here just as we saw up over here as well and then after the event either doesn't happen in this case or you know or typically happens anyways you know uh, you, you get you get some dumping why is that well with events you get event psychology and that means that bigger major market movers are going to be using their funds to create the illusion of a major market pump because they know that they can entice in retailers and people who might be a little bit less educated as to how these things work and make them think that this new upgrade this new announcement this new earnings report this new conference call is going to change everything and everyone's going to in the world's going to be a fucking better place rainbow's going to be everywhere leprechauns are going to lick your ass and that's going to make everyone fucking happy no typically these things are, are very much planned and typically they yeah, i mean people have known about this upgrade for months and months and months and months and months um in the in this specific example so you know it's now now those big market movers who bought down around here and around here now have liquidity to actually dump into they have buyers as you need buy you know if you want to sell you got to have some buyers and uh again understand their perspective for something like that as that's you know that would be one of the things lining up with not so not not so nice price action perhaps but uh i wouldn't rule out a kind of test back into this 140 uh, 142 range first fill out this descending triangle is what it looks like um, we can actually draw this one out as well I mean do you want to call it a, a descending triangle or symmetrical triangle I don't care what you call it technically it's symmetrical actually technically it actually is symmetrical uh, on second thought um, but where would that be pointing down towards yeah back down around the 0.5 right around uh, 128 129 130 and, and like I said if we do get back down around there I, it's very likely to see more continuation it's I don't think it's gonna be bought back up again um, so yeah, and the second that that breaks, this takes on a whole new meaning overall. It's just making one massive, you know, I mean, rising channel bear flag is what it looks like. Uh, I mean, on the daily, it's very is a very obvious front run at the 200 simple, the pink moving average right here. Um, before before Mr. Butero was was able to confirm new higher highs, uh, getting the dildo body stopped right right before that. You also see the very obvious volume signature coming in down around here as a nice orderly drop off in volume as Mr. Butero tries and tries again. But uh, overall, this is just to be considered um, one of the same as far as I'm concerned. And as long as we are, I mean, as as long as we're in this posture, and I would be more cognizant of that. I would be I'd be very careful. Um, of course, if this thing actually does get back above 162, this is going to take on a new mean. It's going to actually look like an Adam and Steve bottom. But again, you know, needs to get back above 162 first and foremost. If that were to happen, that could actually that could actually be the impetus for another test into the into the into maybe even the low 200s. But uh, again, right now, I think yeah, I, that's 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 the least that's a less likely thing to happen. 
Um, traditional markets, traditional markets over here, uh, bouncing off the red 10 simple moon average. So yes, you know, we, we called the top at 281. Again, not, I mean, like, I don't mean to say that to sound fucking arrogant or anything like that. I always want to call myself out. No, I say these things so that, so that you can do them yourself. And, uh, and it's, I mean, it's, it's just this easy. I mean, there was three tops there before people are likely going to sell the next pass on there. Now, is it time to be super bearish or anything like that? No. Uh, no, it's, it's certainly not. It's not. It's not time to be bearish until you actually confirm a full-on reversal, and that would be below 262. For right now, I mean, we're still in the context of this rising wedge, which is typically a bearish reversal pattern. Or, or, uh, but at the same point in time, needs to actually break first. <laughs> so, where's the support? Two, 278. We actually bounced off of it yesterday. We saw this during the stream, uh, having a decent reaction upon it. I mean, maybe it puts in another another uh, another run at 281. That's probably gonna be a sell. But until this guy actually breaks, there's not a huge trade to be made. If it does break, I would be looking down around uh, this area at around 272, or sorry, 274 it was, around the daily 200 simple. Yeah, where is that? Yeah, it's coming in right around 274 and a half actually. So if that guy were to break, that's what I'd be looking for. But for right now, it's, it's being pretty resilient. It looks like it actually wants to give another test higher. Um, so if you did take that trade, you know, be, be, be very quick to be opening and closing on supporting resistances. Again, not financial advisor, not a financial advisor, but I do want to check out Mr. Ripples. Uh, Mr. Ripple is quite interesting as well. He had, he got listed on Coinbase, which everyone's so excited about, but what happens after that? You just give up your whole rally. Ripple, are you not even excited? Are you not, are you not even fucking trying? It's ridiculous, man. But you can see a very, a very obvious descending triangle forming on this guy as well. Um, that has a measure move pointing all the way down to about 18 to 19 cents. I, again, like I say, I don't short ripple. I don't, tr I don't trade all to begin with, but this thing just does weird things. But, uh, Hey, if you actually do more importantly, if you do break below 28, um, 28, uh, what is this like 28 and a quarter cent, not going to be good, whether it's into the mid to uh, 20 cents or, 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 or completely fulfills that, that, that measure move. Um, I don't have a strong opinion on, but yeah, we did just lose a 21 exponential yesterday using it as resistance. Uh, currently speaking, um, overall, I, this, I mean, this is a bear, it's a bearish pattern in a bearish market. Just another lower high. As far as I'm concerned, daily Stokes fresh cross down as of the other day. I think two days are probably coming down as well. Uh, they are hinting at one, but not confirmed. Um, so yeah, not too much to say about that. Uh, did did lose the exponential on the two-day total time frame for the RSI. Uh, lost it days ago on the daily. But not too many other clues in this chart. Just overall pretty cut and dry. Uh, let's go look at Mrs. Litecoin. How's she doing? Mrs. Litecoin at 45 and a quarter. Um, again, uh, actually holding up the best out of the out of the top market caps, as she's still maintaining the 200 simple moon average. Actually, pretty resilient. A very obvious, um, a very obvious nice hammer dildo with actually continuation on top of it as well, which I don't I haven't seen on any of the other coins. Um, but of course, you know, still resistance. If, if it does pop back up, major resistance at $47, major resistance at $48.5, and then major resistance right here at $50. I mean, it's it's a slow trudge up, and with all of our higher time frame oscillators coming down right now, this is your daily Stokes coming down. This is your two day Stokes just actually confirmed across down, losing the exponential on, on on the RSI daily, same sort of thing, trending below there, putting a major bearish divergence all the way through. Uh, the second the second that forty three and a half dollars breaks, I would be looking for a move down to down to the bottom of the range at about thirty eight thirty nine dollars. But of course, that needs to happen first. It's I mean, it's right now it's it's still being very resilient in this area. It's definitely it's definitely the most resilient of the big of like the top 10 or, or whatever it is right now. Uh, but again, we see, the, we see the same sort of descending trend line forming here. You know, do we have something like this going on? Looks a little bit far-fetched when it's kind of like this, but you know, hunt to the downside, hunt to the upside. And now once again, in equilibrium. God damn it, I just used that silly word. Oh my God. Anyways, uh, yeah, we can go look at Mr. Steller really quick. Uh, Mr. Steller looking like a sick doggy. Once again, again, looking at the alt cones, um, this is an ascending broadening wedge, typically a bearishly resolved pattern. Again, struggling, the, struggling a lot, uh, uh, bearish divergence on the daily, back below the exponential on the RSI. Daily Stokes coming down, wants to come down. Uh, it's currently sitting on support, so as long as you're above 8.2 support, or sorry, 8.3 support, uh, it's okay, but the second that you snap back below that, uh, snap back. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, probably, probably retesting the bottom of the range at around seven and a half cents, uh, maybe high seven cents. Um, doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. Uh, what's Monero Cash doing? Monero Cash um, hesitating as well. Not really, not strong, not weak. Kind of right in the middle of the pack. What about uh, EOS Cash? EOS Cash giving up a lot of its rally already. Um, resistance at 370, support 330, 3, 333. 
Neocache, Neocache, uh, got getting obvious resistance, obvious, uh, uh, obvious rejection, and right at uh, nine dollars thirty cents. Longs were below that, looking to me like pressure downwards still in the context of this rising channel. Um, let's see what do we got? Tron Cash over here. Tron Cash, uh, just holding on to the bottom side of the support. The second that you break two point four cents, very likely coming down to two point one eight. B Cash, uh, what do we got on B Cash? Same sort of thing, not really doing anything unique. Uh, did lose the 21 exponential using it as resistance right now today. More more downwards pressure on this guy. And second that, uh, that 128 breaks, I'd be looking for a move down to about 120-ish one, uh, area, 119. Uh, Z Cash, B Cash, and Z Cash, or Electric Coin, whatever the fuck they call it. Again, we on the weaker side, um, support right at $50.50. 50 .50. You break that, very likely re returning to the prior lows and probably beyond. Pretty weak chart. I mean, overall, you can just redraw this one now. Uh, is what it comes down to, something like this. Overall, overall, very weak chart. So again, I'm gonna go back on to Bitcoin and kind of wrap this bitch up. Overall, uh, very little has actually changed in the last few days, even even though we had a pretty massive hunt to the downside right there. Still no continuation of the upside. We do see some coins weaker than others, which typically is not a good sign. I really don't like it when most of the things are slinking over and then you have a few coins that are news or event-based driven, uh, kind of holding it up a little bit higher, but still not looking too damn healthy themselves. So again, Bitcoin, very, very accurately, very, very concisely speaking in the lower time frames, 3850, your more, your more, uh, your more obvious resistance as long as you're below there. No real, I mean, no real upwards momentum. If you do break 38.50, more importantly, then nothing's stopping you from 39.50. So actually, a nice trade to be made. If 39.50 breaks, then I am looking for a run back into you know 4200 most likely, maybe even beyond. Uh, by the same token, uh, support right here at about um, what is it? About 37.50. That's also going to be your daily. It's kind of like a zone between 37.50 and well, that's just 37.50 right here. Actually, that kind of counts. Uh, 37.50 breaks. I would be looking for another test back down to 36.50. 36.50 though, I think unlikely to hold. It would probably lead towards a full-on move till it's 35.50, and then that would start to have implications with the higher time frames that we spoke about before. So again, those are the two kind of things that I'd be worried about right now, or sorry, have on my mind's eye. Um, of course, just with perspective, you don't need to worry, as uh, as all of these things should be accounted for right now. But overall. Um, very little change in the last few days, just kind of snaking our way around in this uh, formation still. So again, I hope this one finds you well. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. I'm going to record some more options videos, having a lot of fun putting that together, but I'm also realizing that there's so much little things to really discuss. And I want this to be like a true beginner series to like bring people up and say, okay, what's a call, what's a put. And just even describing that is fucking difficult, man. It's really fucking difficult, but I think it can be done. So, uh, so I should probably, I should, I'll probably be releasing those, uh, this weekend. Um, and looking forward towards that as well as a new psychology series entry as well. So again, guys, hope this one finds you well. I have had an absolute pleasure to speak with you. I hope that I hope to see you later tonight in the live stream. If not, well, I wish you a happy Thursday Thursday and uh, take care.